the call. Take your time. Are we ready, Nathan? All right. Take it away. Hello. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. In time? Oh, it's cool. Hey guys, uh, I'm Jay, CMO of Loopring. Um, so on the agenda, Daniel was supposed to be present today, but he's busy with coding and sent me over to uh, give you guys some ideas about Loopring. Uh, before we start, I would like to know uh, how many of you guys use crypto wallet here? Please put your hands up. Wow, still um, there are a lot of people, they don't use crypto wallet. I Probably, do you um, do you guys store your token in centralized exchange? Oh, oh, oh. I think some of us thought that you were saying Generic. that you use like an app crypto wallet. Yeah. yeah, it's like decentralized crypto wallet. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah I'm sure most of us do. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, code, code wallet. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Have you guys thought about one day if you can use your crypto wallet to trade tokens? Like turn your wallet into a centralized, a decentralized exchange. Um, it's going to happen. That's what Loopring enable people to build up the decentralized exchange on its own. So in near future, imagine there's already a uh, auto drive car um, like Tesla. So when they Tesla has its own um, AI or smart um, computer, the car can detect itself like to um, uh, do kind of like system upgrading itself. The car will drive to the manufacturer and purchase a system to upgrade or the car can purchase the parts from a factory by tokens. Uh, it's going to happen in a very soon. Uh, so here, let me play a video to show you guys how Loopring works. has become a popular buzzword in the tech field of 2017. There is an increase of more individuals, and institutes are involved in the construction of it. Trading is an important part of the exchange, but there are also many problems with the current one. One, asset trusteeship introduces high risk. Two, price spread exists on different exchanges. Three, the liquidity yeah. of orders is divided. Yeah, sure. Make sure that I'm yeah. Yeah. Thanks. It has become a popular buzzword in the tech field of 2017. There is an increase of more individuals, and institutes are involved in the construction of it. Trading is an important part of the exchange, but there are also many problems with the current one. One, asset trusteeship introduces high risk. Two, price spread exists on different exchanges. Three, the liquidity of orders is divided by many exchanges. This is where the Loopring protocol comes into force so that these problems can be fundamentally resolved. With Loopring protocol functionality, your assets do not need to be hosted on the exchange and instead kept in your blockchain wallet. For example, if you want to exchange token A to token B, Loopring protocol will automatically broadcast your order to the entire network after you authorization. While token A is still safely stored in your wallet, your assets can still be transferred in and out of your wallet, maximizing the usage of your assets. If another user wants to swap token A with token B and the price is right, there will be matchmaking miners in the Loopring protocol that will match the two orders and atomize token A with token B through a smart contract. The order of Loopring protocol is generated and broadcasted off the chain. Only the order matching is completed on the chain. The successful transaction is then conducted on the blockchain. 
by our ring monitors to effectively circumvent the performance of the system. This process can massively improve current blockchain transaction congestion issues. If you all think Blue Green Protocol solves these problems, then you have misunderstood. The thing that is even more exciting about Blue Green Protocol is that it has a unique ring matching trading technology. For traditional crypto trading, it can only be exchanged with one token for another. These orders can only happen during a single transaction. However, with a lot of massive tokens trading pairs on the market, the transaction path is actually more complicated. For example, user X would like to trade token A for token B. User Y would like to trade token B for token C. User Z would like to trade token C for token A. Traditional trading mechanism would not be able to match these three orders successfully. However, with Loop Ring Protocol, we are able to initiate ring matching technology. Here, we can successfully match multiple orders over multiple tokens at once. Ring matching technology can not only improve the success rate of return, but also improve liquidity and transactions. Loop Ring is an open matchmaking ecology. If you want to start a business on the blockchain, download and run the Loop Ring mining software, and your computer will become decentralized exchange so that you can enjoy the commissions and profit margins that come with your success. If you have a certain amount of assets, you can also improve the matching algorithm as a market maker to provide direct liquidity and greater benefits. Did you know all of Loop Ring protocol code is completely open source? The protocol connects decentralized networks, wallets, traders, and matchmakers, breaking the barriers between exchanges and creating a brand new decentralized transactional ecosystem. The idea and technology around Loop Ring protocol is not just limited to Ethereum blockchain, but it can also be deployed onto other public blockchains. There are endless means to feature a blockchain. If you want to know or participate in Loop Ring protocol, please visit the official website at www.loopring.org. Okay, um, I think the um, video is pretty straightforward. Um, it gives you a, uh, like a brief idea what does Loopring works. And so what's Loopring? Uh, Loopring is a decentralized exchange of protocols um, that w enable people to build up a, centralized, a decentralized exchange on its own. Um, Loopring is designed to solve three main problems from decentralized exchange. First is um, security. Uh, as we all know, um, back in 2013 and 2015, uh, Mongox and Bphoenix have been hacked and tons of massive money has been um, stolen. Even last year, um, there's one exchange from Korea have been hacked and went bankrupt. Not long time ago, um, it was like a couple of weeks ago, uh, one exchange, central exchange from Japan has been hacked and it's break the record. Like, yeah, it was like $650 billion have been like worth um, USD tokens has been stolen. So, um, we all know this decentralized exchanges still have those kind of security issues that cannot be solved at this stage. Second is the transparency. Um, for the tra um, traditional centralized exchange, they still use the uh, maker and taker uh, mechanism. It's like they use the order book. Uh, if you guys know uh, FOR, um, hard fork, initial hard forking, so regardless this central exchange support or not, they will receive the new tokens from the um, split, um, uh, split chain. Uh, but as individual investors like you guys, um, you don't have the right um, to receive the token unless the central exchange accept the new tokens. Uh, even they do accept the new tokens, a um, lot of them will do, do kind of upcharge. What they do is they receive the uh, tokens at the initial at the first time, and then they sell um, sh after, right after they re uh, receive the tokens when the price is really high, and then dump straight away. So the price drop massively. When the price drop down to the bottom, they purchase back. After they purchase back, they open the withdraw. So um, like individual investors start to withdraw the token when the price is really low. Uh, Second and third is liquidity. Um, as we all know, there's right now there's like over 600 
centralized exchange has been open upon the market uh, since 2016. And every month there's like over 30, uh, over 30 centralized exchange come up on the market. A lot of them, especially like new exchanges, they have no liquidities. Um, if you place the order, it takes hours and even ages to um, complete the orders, which makes the price has huge difference. So it allows um, central exchange to do arbitrage and a lot of internal tradings. Uh, wh wh what they can do is they can adapt and uh, they can adopt the uh, loopprint protocols to um, to integrate with the entire network. So which gives them the uh, right to um, to do relay with the entire network. So Loopring is mainly solve those three main issues from the uh, uh, current s ecosystems. Uh, Loopring enable people to um, to trade trustlessly, um, uh, anonymously, and safely in a decentralized way. Because we do believe blockchain is decentralized uh, solutions. Um, people should not. Uh, give up their right and they should not disclose anything. It will be awkward if you still need to um, uh, to trust a centralized exchange to trade uh, because a lot of countries they don't have enough or they don't have sufficient law to support or to protect investors even in the USA. Um, imagine if your token has been stolen, uh, your token, you store your token in a centralized exchange and then someone, some hackers just took them and uh, take, stole, steal the tokens from central exchange, then what are you gonna do? You're gonna um, sue them? It's take ages to, um, res to, to, um, to process the whole things. Uh, um, so that's another downside from central exchange. Um, so how Loopring works, um, here are the things. Um, you can see um, we send order from our own wallet as long as the wallet adapt the um, Loopring protocols. Then the order will goes to a blockchain, uh, it's more like consortium blockchain. Then the blockchain will do a relay. And once all the order have been matched, then we will put it on smart contract. So the smart contract will do only uh, settlement and the clearing. Once the settlement and the clearing done, then the token have been sent back to the um, users, like wallet. Um, so um, we do not involve any fiat. If you want to do a fiat, you want to cash out, you still need to go to central exchange. We only um, do like token to tokens. Because we believe if you want to involve um, fiat, um, that kind of, they will involve uh, ML, and, um, ML and KYC issues, then it have to be regulated. Uh, Loopring also has another unique technology. It's called Ring Match. Um, for example, um, as I mentioned before, in for a traditional mechanis uh, trading mechanism, there's only take and makers. Um, but for Loopring, we can bring up multiple parties into one transactions. For for example, there are three people: A, B, C. They want to. Tr they have three three different type of tokens they want to trade. So, to um, person A can trade token a one to token B, a uh, token two, and person B can trade token two to token three, and token uh, person C, he can trade the token um, two to, or uh, three to token A. So like do a circulation, which can increase the liquidity and trading speed. Um, so Loopring is a protocol um, on Ethereum ecosystem. Right now, in Ethereum has the largest ecosystem. There's over 1,700 tokens. I think it's now is 1,800 tokens on its uh, blockchain. Uh, and all of them can be adapted by loopering uh, protocols. And also, uh, we have adopted the uh, Neo network and Qtem. Um, Qtem blockchain uh, has already been completed. And now we're going to deploy our protocol on NEO. Uh, hopefully it will be complete in end of March. Um, 
So we also build up our own wallet. It's called Loopring.io. It's just a very basic wallet to let people to try out our protocols because um, right now there's still um, there's still a lot of companies or wallet they haven't like adopt our protocols. So if you want to try like decentralized trading way or like peer to peer trading, you can tr go to our um, crypto wallet and let's try it out. And Loopring protocol, we have four sectors. First is Ethereum. Oh, we have four sectors. First is smart contract. Um, so we have been successfully um, complete our smart contract, and we team up with UC Berkeley, um, also a Zcash team, to develop our smart contract. And due to, we have received a lot of good feedbacks, and also we provide smart contract auditing service. And uh, second, Looper, that's our wallet, uh, Loopring.io. Third one is Loopring.js um, because we are open source project um, protocol and everything's up on the GitHub. So people can learn from uh, our library. That's the Loopring.js. Uh, we are, <coughs> we are um, open to public. Anyone can come and learn. And if they have questions, they come to our community. Can, and we have like a lot of contributors and volunteers to help uh, you to, to learn. Last one is the Relay. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Relay is another uh, technology from us. Um, it's like consortium. Uh, it, it, it integrate with the consortium blockchain. We team up with the NEO um, to increase the liquidity speed. And this is the uh, very basic user interface for our Loopring wallet. Uh, it's also a decentralized exchange. So um, basically, any ERC wallet can integrate with Loopring protocols. They, so in the future, for example, like my Ether wallet, they can add a Loopring um, um, protocols on the wallet and then there will be a little tab on the top of the wallet or user interface windows then you can click in and then start to send your or place your orders um, our roadmap for 2018 um, so as I mentioned Ethereum has the largest ecosystems so our mainly focus is still on Ethereum network we have finished the hybrid or ERC20 and ERC233 and tokens uh, it's it's not cross chain, but it's kind of um, a little milestone for cross chain, uh, and what I call uh, prediction. And also, uh, in order to prove our user experience, we st we will spend a lot of time to um, invest and on Ethereum blockchain. Second is uh, expanding blockchains. As I mentioned, um, we have uh, recently we just. Um, complete our private sales on NEO network, a uh, NEO blockchain. So on each public blockchain, there will be a separate protocols because right now there's no cross-chain technology or there's no mature or good enough cross-chain technology out on the market. So on each blockchain, we ha will have its separate um, protocols, which we have to, um, uh, we have to do another like a round of um, an um, airdrop for all the um, LRC token holders. LRC is the Loopring um, protocol tokens ho and, and name. So anyone who holds an um, LRC will receive um, a new token. As long as we're gonna launch another token on another blockchain, we will airdrop. And our focus is on um, top 10 blockchains. So we have, we have um, finalized uh, um, NEO and QTERM and hopefully, uh, maybe end of this year, we will probably la deploy another protocol on EOS. And our ultimate goal is to launch 10 protocols on 10, top 10 blockchains. Uh, next one is the research. Um, as I mentioned, we are a very um, technique-oriented team. Uh, we have 18 full-time, and 14 of them are full-time engineers. Uh, so. We also uh, team up with UC Berkeley, uh, Dr. Alessandra, um, one founder of Zcash. Um, we team up together to res do research and develop for cross-chain technology. 
Um, so if in the near future there's techno um, cross-chain technology come out, we will make sure we will be the front team to use the technology, or front cross-chain technology. So uh, it will be like you can use your wallet to trade Bitcoin to Ethereum straight away. And second is the um, relay. Um, we also work closely. Um, our dev team in Shanghai work close to Neo. Uh, it's another one of the biggest uh, public um, public blockchain and uh, in China. It was backed by Chinese government, kind of. Um, we've also um, we've been working closely and to <coughs> research the um, relay systems. And last one's communities. As I say, a little bit story about our Loopring fundraising history. So we complete our concluded our token sale back in August last year and then we raised about uh, 120,000 Ethereum. Now it's worth like 100 mils USD. Uh, so we, work, we, we have set up a fund and then we decided to give it back to the society, our communities. Um, anyone who can contribute in marketing, um, PR or develop uh, aspects, we are free to um, reward them. And next one is the um, uh, smart contract develop, uh, development. And so, as I say, um, because we have spent a lot of time on our smart contract development, and then we have received a lot of good feedbacks and also learned a lot, lot of things from our development. So we will do a, um, a uni tour, like a top university and tutorials um, around the world. Uh, so far, we have completed, like la last month, end of last month, I did a, a um, tutorial at uh, UC Irvine, and my business partner, Daniel, he did a, a tutorial in uh, Columbia University. So we are planning to cover east, both east and coast, and also uh, like Texas area as well. Um, so we believe students, like top uni students, those talents are the futures. Um, we have to influence them to, uh, to, to uh, start off the um, blockchain technologies, to influence them to learn the blockchains. That's the futures. And uh, um, ICOs, uh, yeah, just mentioned ICO we did in the past. And also, um, because on each new blockchains, um, we will also do a bit of private sale um, for NEO, QTERM, and possibly EOS. I 30% of our token will be private sale, and then the rest of them will be airdropped to the public or communities. Um, ro um, robots, um, so we do believe in the near future, uh, uh, AI can make decision by themselves. Um, sell or to drive cars or any robot at home, they can make their own decisions they can replace or upgrade their system by themselves. By themselves, um, they have their own tokens. They have their own wallet. They can purchase um, tokens and based on their own judgment. Um, so here's our uh, here's my presentation, and uh, feel free to uh, join our Twitter. We are really active on our Twitter. Um, also, we have Telegram and the Reddit. Um, so that's pretty much it. Does anyone have the questions? Sure. I, I, unfortunately, I have multiple questions, but are you going to be at a booth? So Sorry, I have to catch a flight. Okay, so let, me, let me just say, <laughs> one. Uh, you know, I have loop rings. How am I going to receive the airdrop? And then when I do, is there a KYC requirement to be, for me to do so? Oh, sure. Um, so you... If you already are uh, looping <coughs> token holders, and uh, make sure it's on your own uh, wallet, it's not in the right. central exchange, then you can just go to our looping wallet to bind your new address, like new wallet address and uh, QTERM wallet address, then you will be able to receive the token when we do the airdrop. So I go to your site and I, and I do, yeah, just my address for my NEO yeah. or my QTERM, QTERM yes. It's very simple. We will uh, release a video instruction in about two weeks. Yes, uh, on your website, you'll release that. Yeah, but Twitter or... So there is no really KYC unless that... Airdrop, you don't need that to do KYC. Uh, uh, well, so some do. But oh. so unless that particular uh, Ethereum wallet is holding your ERC keys, there are KYC, so there's nothing else like Polygon. No. So, okay. Yeah, that's it.
funds. And so I was wondering if during times, like, so you say that um, primarily we'll use the Ethereum network to <coughs> settle your smart contracts for each trade. During times of like explosions in volume on Ethereum, the gas cost required to push a transaction needs to be increased. Is that incorporated within your smart contract? And or how will that be handled in times where the Ethereum network is being blasted by volume? Okay, uh, well, good question. First is um, the transaction fees. This is out of our hands. It's pretty much as long as you're in Ethereum ecosystems, everybody have to deal with that. We cannot control that. What we can do is um, for the volume, uh, we still encourage like institution, institutional investors and high net worth investors to use the protocols uh, because when they sell or buy the tokens, the volume will be huge. Then if they go to centralized exchange, first, most of them, w uh, most of the institutional investors we talk, they don't like centralized exchange. First is the transaction fees really high. Um, and the second is the um, when they buy or sell the tokens, the volume will be really large. It takes hours unless they go to even Binance. It takes times for them to complete the orders. So we encourage the um, institutional and um, high net worth investors to use the protocols. And even for individual investors, um, we do believe um, central exchange has better uh, customer service. A uh, lot of them, what if you uh, lose your key, uh, private keys, then your money will be gone forever. Uh, so uh, right now we still think um, decentralized exchange is good for institutional investors. Unless uh, individual investors have been um, well educated and know the risk, risk of the um, trading in decentralized way. Fees, uh, it's about like 80% lower than trans, trans um, central exchange. Yeah, it would be a, lo a lot cheaper. Yep. <coughs> the one in the back? Sorry, I cannot hear you. Um. What? Sorry. What's the um, purpose of doing your protocol on 10 different platforms, and it seems like you're doing an ICO on each of those platforms. Yeah, uh, okay. The reason is because um, right now e Ethereum has the largest ecosystem, but we don't know what happened in the next two years. Hopefully e Ethereum is still the largest one, but maybe EOS came up, and like catch up the uh, EOS and uh, the Ethereum, then EOS will be the largest one. But who knows, there will be another, another new project, another new, e public blockchains. So for us, we have to be like, we follow the top 10. It's safe for us, like put eggs in different basket. Yes, diversify the risks, yeah. Like we don't put one odd eggs in one basket, then what if, you know? Yeah. Is this on? Yeah, so. To participate in the airdrops, you have to have uh, Loop Spring in a, your own wallet, and then you'll have the airdrops from everybody you do the ICOs on? Um, if you want to receive an airdrop, um, first you have to have the original token, Loop Spring. And then once you have the Loop Spring, make sure it's stored in your own crypto wallet. And it's not in centralized <laughs> wallet, otherwise we'll have to do, uh, airdrop to the centralized exchange. Then, um, then you have to go to our website and then to like uh, input your new wallet address and QTERM uh, wallet address, then you will be able to receive the tokens. Yeah. 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 Regarding 1031 exchanges, how how are you affected by that by U.S. IRS rules? Sorry, um, I didn't hear you properly. The, the 1031 exchanges for tax reasons. Oh, tax. Are, are you affected at all by that? Okay. Um, for the tax purpose uh, reasons, um. We do believe, that's why we only involve token to token, because uh, if, if we, um, well, it's, it's hard to say, if you, regu if you regulate, um, if you put too much regulation on blockchain, it's hard for them to develop. 
s but there's also a risk for people doing uh, money laundries and in blockchain, spe especially Bitcoins. And last year, in 2016, there's <coughs> almost like when 10, I think it's 10 billion USD dollars kind of being involved into money laundries internationally. Um, uh, um, so I'll, my background is PayPal. Uh, I was doing risk management, so I have those kind of data. Uh, so we do believe regulation is good for the long term, um, but only if it's involved to fiat, then the government or people should be regulated. Then they have to claim the tax. If just the token to token, token to token is purely technology, then we think um, it should not be tax. Sorry, what's that? Yeah, I'll talk to you after. So, uh, my question is for, for, for decentralized exchange, uh, is it possible for hackers to hack into your phone and you know, impossible. broadcast your yeah. order? Unless you, uh, unless you uh, store your token, uh, not token, unless you store your key, um, private key in your email, or you save in your Twitter private message, then they hack your phone, um, find the data or the private key in your histories. Otherwise, it's impossible to hack. Great. Yeah. All right. Jay, round of applause for uh, Jay Joe. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I got a uh, I got a text for people who are interested in uh, early bird pricing for a September conference. Uh, BitcoinSuperConference.com backslash early. Uh, Four ninety seven, I think, until Sunday. I just got that text. Uh, next up, we're back here. Sorry, I think it's uh, I think it's here in Dallas at the convention center. Um, I. Uh, it should say on the website as well. So that's BitcoinSuperConference.com uh, backslash early. Uh, we're back here at 535 uh, in nine minutes with Jeremy Kaufman. Thank you. Here's Jeremy Kaufman. <laughs> Testing. Hello?
Thank you. How did you hear about it? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It. I, that's very cool. Yeah. It needs to work a little better than it does. <laughs> but, but we're getting there. And, and uh, I'm certainly proud of the fact, you know, most of these, a lot of these places still only have a white paper. So, you know, we have a, at least we have a real application. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the one like, I don't know, is that an ERC-20 one? Or... Okay, it's their own blockchain? Okay. All right. I don't actually know about all the... I, I pay a surprisingly small amount of attention. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like... I'm like, I pay attention... I'm like, what's YouTube doing? You know, like, places... I pay attention to them. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a blue ocean, right? Like, it's a wide open space. So, uh, I pay much more attention to the large incumbents. Should I do anything to verify this is... Working? It's on, so. Okay, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, is there someone who's on your team who could just take a picture of me while I'm speaking? I'm you're oh, you're not on the team. Oh, I'm sorry. To nice to meet you. I'm Jeremy. Nice <laughs> so you're after me then? Or? No, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, you want to... Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I just want like a picture for Twitter or whatever, you know. Yeah. My social media guy says I have to do that. I'm terrible at it, so I just do what he says. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right now I'm I'm uh, I'm actually tethered to my phone because I was ha the a lot of ne a lot of public networks block weird port traffic, especially public like open networks, so I can't con I couldn't connect to library from the from the lobby Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, yeah, I connect. I connect from my phone, no problem. So I just, I just did that. It's funny is I pushed when I was I was like I really wanted to use my own computer and like I was on the email exchange with them and I like pushed back, I was like, I'd really like to use it and they're like, No, you have to send it to us. You can't use your own computer and then I got here and I'm like, Can I use my computer? I go, No problem <laughs> Like I went back and forth on three emails, I was like, you know, hey look, I get it, but I'd really like to use my own computer if I could. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, No, you can't <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got it on, so... Yeah, I have the master down. Okay, okay. So you could just hear me. <laughs> All right, we got to... Check, 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 check. It's down? The system is down. The system is down. <laughs> That's an old one. Uh, I, as long as the mic's... I, did, I've never ver I haven't verified that it's working, but otherwise, yes. Oh, yeah, it's working. Great. Check, 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 check. Yeah, we got it. Library? 
library. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, everyone. Once, oh, once Nathan gets back there, we'll get started in a minute or so with uh, Jeremy Kaufman from Library. We're coming down the home stretch today, too. Thanks for being here. That's right. But Somebody they saved the, save the best for last. I did. Somebody went woo back there.